sure. <laughs> nice. That's great. Well, I, uh, you know, I appreciate this. So what we'll do is we'll get started here. Um, and how do I pronounce your last name? I want to make sure I pronounce it correctly. Um, Newberry, just like strawberry. Okay, Newberry, just how it sounds. I wonder if it was if I, if it was Newberry or something like that. So. No, okay, just Newberry. New Okay, great. Um, and we'll start with just kind of, you know, tell us about your business, tell it as what it is that you do, so um, to give people some context as well. Sure. Um, I, yeah, are, you, are we? No, we'll, we'll, uh, I have a, just a quick introduction and then we'll jump right in. So. All right, perfect. There we go. Here we go. Well, welcome to the Virtual Assistant Podcast. This is the place for busy leaders who are looking to delegate more so they can focus on what's important, most important in their business. My name's Rich Birch. I'm the host around these parts. And today we have Tommy Newberry on the phone. I'm super excited to have him join us. Uh, he's uh, an author, speaker, coach, uh, best-selling author. I'm ex super excited to have you, Tommy. Thanks for being on the show today. Glad to be with you, Rich. Tommy, why don't you tell us a bit about your business? What is it that you do? Well, uh, we coach entrepreneurs, uh, not only helping them in their business goals, but helping them in all of life. So since 1991, we've worked in about 30, 32 different industries, wow. and our clients all seem to have one thing in common. They want to succeed in their business life. They want to get to the next level economically, but they don't want to do it at the expense of their faith, their family, or their health. And so we provide the planning tools, the support, the collaboration to help them get from where they are now to where they'd rather be. Nice. Now, what was happening in your world when you, you know, the flag went up and you said, gosh, I have got to get a virtual assistant? Well, probably, well, there's too much going on in my world. <laughs> and that was probably one thing. But for, um, for the last 20 years or so, I have had one, two, and then for several years I had three assistants, you know, in the office right. um, supporting me and supporting my team. Um, at the time that I decided to, to look into the virtual assistant, which has been almost a year now, um, I think I had a assistant executive assistant fatigue syndrome. <laughs> and, um, it, you know, it was just, it, there was no, like, major problem or anything. I just had an assistant, and um, she was fine, really nice person. And, you know, in 20 years, I've had, like, five assistants, and they all were very helpful, different, some more helpful and so forth, different strengths. But I was just tired of having to, uh, to manage another person to help me. Right. And it, I was just got tired of it. And, of course, if, you're, if you don't interact and if you're not um, proactive with your assistant, you don't get as much out of them. And they probably don't enjoy the experience. But truly, I was just tired of it. So even before my assistant left, I had already looked into – getting an, uh, a, a virtual assistant it, to support me in addition to having my regular assistant. Right. And then as it turned out, um, uh, she and I decided that, uh, that we should, you know, go our separate ways. Fortunately, I'd already started the process of getting a virtual assistant, so I was prepared. But lo and behold, um, now having an assistant – one assistant I have for 10 hours and then another one per week and another one five hours per week uh, more than sufficiently covers what my other assistant who was working 40 to 50 hours per week was doing in one week. Wow. And um, I had heard that that was a possibility. I didn't really believe it. <laughs> but, but there apparently are so many inefficiencies. Right. Not apparently. There are so many inefficiencies in having somebody on staff present with you, they're not meaning to be inefficient, I don't think. Right. But the travel time sometimes gets incorporated into what they consider their hours. Mm -hmm. um, you know, their lunch time, their break time, their bathroom time, their we're talking to their daughter or their sister or their husband. It's all these fine things that everybody's got to do, but how much work actually gets done? Right. So what I found with my virtual assistant is – when she's working for me, she's working for me. Right. And and the rest of the time, she's uh, either handling her own business or she's uh, working with somebody else. But there's not this extra time that really isn't allocated for results. So right. I love that concept. I, I've been um, telling people about it this week about how powerful it is, and they don't believe it either. 
Right. It sounds well. I, I have been interacting with Erin, you know, leading up to this um, this podcast, and I say she was just a pleasure to work with. Uh, great to you know to interact with. Well, she's representing you well, um, oh, great, you know, great. as you interact, which is fantastic. Now, what are some of the you know top two or three things that you've kind of delegated over to your virtual assistants? Well, uh, certainly my calendar, and um, uh, handling event planning. I uh, recently bill paying. Hmm. Um, and then, believe it or not, this is sort of coming, I'm late in the game on this, but uh, my email, we're just now, uh, she helped me with my email, but right. we're literally last week, this week, and then going into next week, we're literally transitioning to uh, her owning my email. So she had a company email that she already oversaw, which was great, but I had been paranoid and um, had held on to my private email <laughs> Because I frankly could not, um, that was just my own issue that, you know, right. this, everybody else that I've ever worked with, I've been in the same room with them. Right. And I don't know if that's part of it, but I thought, well, you know, let me just let her have the company email and I'll hang on to my own personal email. Um, but really, it's not, it's not uh, practical for me to do that. It's, it's not a good use of my time. So now I've got a private email um, and then she has my the company email plus my previous email that people corresponded with me on and she's going to own all of that and we've got a system now that we've been working on how she gets emails to me and then how I respond to people never giving up my private email um, so that's important research uh, is something else that she handles for me um, travel um, and then my wife is not very good from a technology standpoint, and so Aaron has helped with um, some projects my wife has had to do with school, uh, okay. mom type stuff, and sending out correspondence. Um, so all of those things, really. It's probably a better question of what hasn't she right. helped with. Right. Uh, and and I've, I'm somebody that I pressed the envelope with my other assistants. I, I, whenever I hired somebody, I said, I'm I'm only comfortable with this if you're willing to be my life assistant. Right. And um, you know I didn't take advantage of anything, but or but but I literally nothing's off the table. Right. Everything's included because um, and again this may sound sort of extreme, but an assistant in my mind is somebody who helps you uh, invest more time in what you can do and what only you can do. Right. And so that means if there's personal items that need to be handled, anything that takes me away from my genius is something that I'd like my assistant, or in my case now, my two assistants to help me with. Yeah, absolutely. I, I appreciate you flagging the, I think a lot of times we make a false dichotomy between kind of work and personal stuff. And one of the great advantages of working with a virtual assistant is they can take over a number of those kind of personal tasks. Like you say, you know, paying bills or, you know, connecting with stuff for the kids' school or scheduling stuff that, you know, that gives, frees you up on the home side. I mean, yeah, to, to, time is time. So yeah, absolutely. you allocate that freed up time to work or you allocate it to your kids or your spouse or you get you get an extra workout in because yeah. you have an assistant how much is that worth to you absolutely you know, how much is it how much will it cost you if you don't get that workout in right. um, so the, the value proposition is huge Oh, very cool. Now you mentioned there. I'm going to press in a little bit. You mentioned that you know I think most leaders they you know have control issues, or maybe it's just they have a way they like things done. Um, you know what is one or two tasks, or maybe just one thing that was hard to delegate, um, and how did you overcome that kind of difficulty? Um, well, uh, probably is uh, it's it's probably rather trivial you know when I when you say sometimes when you when you think stuff it seems more significant but when you say it out <laughs> loud um, you realize it's not that significant but let's say there was a, um, uh, a a important client that I needed to have I need to reschedule an appointment so I feel bad right. that I have to reschedule the appointment right, right. Uh, number one so then I would tell myself well I really need to make the call mm -hmm. but that's that's a uh, death spiral right there so you really right. you need to have somebody that you trust so much that is a good extension or representation of you that they can handle all of those things and preferably better than you can you know they can have a a nicer tact a, a they can be calmer and so forth uh, so so the probably the, the the big answer to that is is interaction with my top clients 
and right. confidence that she could interact with them at a level that would uh, make us all look good. Right. Very cool. Um, so what have you been able to accomplish more, say, in this last year through, you know, a virtual assistant, um, you know, with the time that you've been given back through uh, using a VA? Well, I've had, I, I, I'm a writer, I'm a coach, I'm a speaker, so I've had more time to develop content, I've had more time to improve those things that I was already pretty good at doing, mm -hmm. and um, I've also then, not only from a time standpoint, but from a financial standpoint, been able to invest in a uh, technology uh, uh, resource that has allowed me to, uh, you know, lift some of my business operations up to the late 90s. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, that has allowed me to, uh, you know, automate some parts of my business that, that were manual and to update some of the ways that we bill clients, um, to, uh, you know, use some contact management uh, uh, packages that were too laborious to sort of use on my own. So uh, right now, this again, as I mentioned earlier, I ha I've had for the most part of my career, I've had two assistants, and for a short period I had three, and I most recently had one. Well, right now, I have less than one. Right. <laughs> so I have, what is um, I'm 15 hours a week with my virtual assistants, and nothing is getting missed wow. that, that was being handled when I had somebody here 45, 50 hours a week. Right. Um, there's one element which um, fortunately with EA help uh, indirectly has helped me figure out a solution for, but we deliver workshops and okay. so we have to have somebody on site. Mm -hmm. So while that's not their particular uh, niche, um, uh, the fine people there helped me uh, find a solution so that I could have almost a concierge when I did workshops. It's not a full-time need, but that was my biggest uh, you didn't ask this directly, but that was my biggest hang-up with right. going to a virtual assistant is there are times in my business where I need people on site. Right. And so you can, you can be real creative. I mean, you could, you could think, well, you know, I'd like somebody to handle my mail. How could, well, how could that happen with a virtual assistant? Well, you could reroute your mail to another state, mm. you know, your virtual assistant, or once a week, some, you could, you know, send a FedEx package uh, right. with the mail, or there's lots of options. I mean, there are there's very few things that you can't outsource to a virtual assistant, but there is one, and that's being on site. Right. So, um, so, but indirectly, we found a solution, and 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 a solution that was a better fit. Instead of having to hand, have a full time solution, we have a solution for the on site only when we need it. Right. Versus paying for it when you need it and when you don't need it. Right. Very cool. Well, we're going to jump through the lightning round questions. These are the questions that we ask everybody that comes on uh, the Virtual Assistant Podcast. Uh, what's a, like a game show. I know, right? It's true. There's no lightning sound. Do I get a reward at the end or something? <laughs> exactly. Do I have a lifeline? <laughs> yeah, you have to call Aaron. Um, okay. You know, what's your top productivity app that you and your VA are using, or a couple of them? Um, well, I uh, Evernote most likely. Okay. Yeah. So definitely. For, certainly for me, we're we're starting to collaborate on that um, with my assistants. Uh, but for me, it's clearly Evernote. That has been a breakthrough for me in the last year. And I'd have to say, combined with the uh, Fujitsu uh, IX 500 scanner or the okay. Evernote edition, there's right. two here, uh, is phen a phenomenal combination to go paperless. Right, um, and I'm probably 80% paperless at my office. Part of my what I do is requires paper, and then uh, at home I'm probably almost completely paperless because of those two things: Evernote and then the Great Scanner. Very cool. I was just talking to a leader earlier today that was able to push it and go 100% paperless because of Evernote. It was uh, it's amazing. That's uh, that's very cool. It is it is easy. Uh, what does your planning process look like in your business? Um, well, I'm in the I'm in the business of planning. <laughs> um, so my planning, you know, uh, on a weekly basis, it's uh, identifying on Sunday night or Monday morning, usually Monday, um, what are the three things that are uh, critical to be accomplished by the end of the week, 
and then developing uh, an action plan for what those things are. Uh, but it's focusing on the results earlier in the week and then having an action list of how you're going to get to those results. Um, and then the broader way that we plan is back from the future, just figuring out, you know, where do you want to be long term or where do you want to be at the end of the year um, and then where do you want to be at the end of the week, sort of breaking it down like that. With our clients, we take them out 30 years um, and then we hone in, though, on the upcoming 90 days but making sure that the current 90-day period is in sync with the long term. Very cool. Well, two kind of fun questions is at the end of the show here. Uh, so in a battle, ninjas versus pirates, who would win? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'll say ninjas. Nice. Well, that's good. You know, most people don't, so which is a good thing. Um, and what's that's a crazy... My eight-year-old would have said ninjas, so I'll go with his answer. Hey, that's good. That's good. Uh, last question. What's a crazy thing that you've asked your VA to do or just something funny uh, that's involved you and your VA? Uh, you know, I, I don't... We were uh, speaking off air about that, you know. I don't know if I have one. I'll say with my previous assistants, uh, they were very helpful in picking out uh, Valentine's Day gifts uh, for my wife. Nice. Uh, so uh, I'll have to make sure that, it, and it's still a secret, by the way, so this can't be that to her. But <laughs> okay. the, years, the years where my assistant uh, shopped for Valentine's gifts always were better years than when I shopped myself, so I don't know if that says anything. Yeah, what does that um, say? <laughs> but I haven't, I haven't gone that, that direction yet with my virtual assistant. Nice. Well, Tommy, if people want to get in touch with you, learn more about your business, your books, that sort of thing, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, probably the best way is uh, TommyNewberry.com, uh, T-O-M-M-Y-N-E-W-B-E-R-R-Y.com, or I have a series of books uh, of, called The 4-8 Principle, and that website is think48, think48.com. So either one of those places, uh, I'm easy to track down. Nice. Well, thanks so much, Tommy. I appreciate you being on the show today and giving us some of your time. Yeah, enjoyed it, Rich. Thanks. Thank you.